Welcome to the CSJD 1520-2820 series installation video. This video will instruct you on installing the cold shrinkable disconnectable splices up to 28 kV for extruded dielectric XLPE EPR power cables, flat strap, LC shield, JCN and copper tape. This video is for demonstration purposes only. Please refer to the product installation instructions included in your kit for exact dimensions and measurements to use. Check cable diameter dimensions in tables 1 and 2 based on your kit selection ordered. Prepare cables. A braid cable 6 inches back from jacket cutback. Using approved solvent wipe, clean the cable jacket for 30 inches on side where splice body will be placed. Cover flat strap neutrals on each side with four wraps of two inch wide tinned copper mesh and then tie off. Cover the copper mesh with a wrap of vinyl tape to ensure it does not come loose during the installation. Remove tape prior to making the ground connection. Remove insulation. Consult tables 2A and 2B in the product installation instructions. At this time, remove the insert from the shear bolt connector if required. Place splice body over cable. Be sure that the cable is clean and dry. Slide the splice body over the cable end so that the release strip of the spiral holdout points toward the duct edge. Install shear bolt connector. Wire brush conductors. Using a wire brush dedicated for use on aluminum or copper conductors, thoroughly clean the bare surface strands of the conductor end. Cleaned conductor ends should be installed immediately after wire brushing to prevent reformation of oxides on all aluminum conductors. Insert conductors so that the insulation butts up with the end of the connector. Hand tighten the shear bolts so that the connector stays in place. Verify the dimensions between end of lug and semicon cutbacks. Refer to your installation instructions for the correct fail-safe dimensions. Follow the tightening sequence as shown in the instruction sheet. For this next procedure, you can use an impact driver or socket wrench. For the purpose of this video, we will use an impact driver. Tighten bolts until the bolts shear off. File smooth any remaining part of the shear bolt that remains higher than the connector. Refer to the installation instructions included with connector for more detail. Clean and degrease the connector area. Abrade insulation if necessary and clean insulation using approved solvent wipe. Install gray mastic at the connector end. Using no more than one strip, install one inch wide gray mastic at the connector insulation interface. Mastic should extend one quarter inch onto insulation and one half inch onto connector until an even taper is formed. Stretch mastic using light tension. Do not over apply. Cover gray mastic with semicon tape. Do not leave any mastic exposed. Continue taping over the connector, stopping at the end line. Attach grounding wire to bus. Thread drain wire through grounding tabs of customer supplied bus. Position ground wire as shown. Connect cable to the customer supplied bus and clean. Position the shear bolt connector to the customer supplied bus. Hand tighten the supplied double-headed shear bolt through the bolt hole with washers 
of connector to the bus. For this video, we will use the impact driver to tighten the bolt until head shears off. Notice, clean the cable and bus insulation areas only, not the semicon tape or bus shoulder to avoid conductive contamination in the interface. Lubrication and lip mastic. With a gloved hand, lubricate the bus insulation first, then cable insulation, and finally connector semicon tape with the supplied DCC compound. Be sure to use extra DCC compound at semicon cutback. Notice, use all of the DCC compound supplied to help fill voids. Use only the DCC compound provided in the kit. Remove yellow tape and plastic protective liner. Remove the yellow tape and plastic protective liner to expose the gray mastic on the lip of the joint body. Notice, do not remove red tab at this time. Slide splice body onto the bus. Position splice body with a red release tab lined up on the side of the bus facing the installer. For the purpose of this video, we are facing the release tab toward the camera for better viewing of the procedure. Slide the splice body firmly onto the bus so that the lip of the joint body, clear portion, overlaps the shoulder of the bus and is firmly butted up against the bus shoulder. Install jacket seal onto bus. Pull the loop toward the bus to remove the red release tab. Push the red release tab into the slot while holding the back side of the holdout to release the jacket holdout. Discard the red tab. The white plastic holdout will remain in place. Do not remove. Slide the jacket sleeve over the splice body and onto the bus and over the ground wire, ensuring that the clear portion remains on the bus shoulder. Release spiral holdout. Release the spiral holdout by pulling counterclockwise. The spiral holdout cannot be pulled out all at once. Slowly pull the spiral holdout on top of the cable and then pass it around and underneath the cable until the spiral has been completely removed. Remove the spiral holdout off of the cable jacket. Clean the cable jacket of any remaining DCC compound. Remove vinyl tape installed over the mesh covered metallic shield. Remove tape and straighten out mesh sock wires. Flare out the end of the copper braid to maximize contact with the mesh-covered metallic shield. Lay the 10-coated copper braid over the mesh-covered metallic shield with the solder block aligned with the cable jacket cutback. Tape ground braid to hold in place while completing this step. Remove the black tape holding the end of the mesh sock wires and straighten the mesh sock wires out over the remaining neutrals. If using a knife, be careful not to damage the rejacketing material or splice body. Apply braid, spring clamps, and tape. Fold splice neutral sock over the braid. Install two turns of spring clamp over the braid covered metallic shield, external ground braid, and splice mesh sock. Fold the neutral sock over the spring clamp if enough mesh sock is available. Continue to install spring clamp completely. Tighten spring clamp by twisting in direction of installation. Secure spring clamp with three layers of vinyl tape wrapped in direction of the spring clamps. Continue taping over ends of the mesh sock wires to cover any sharp points. Install 2.5 inch mastic and expand rejacketing sleeve. Lift the ground braid away from the cable jacket. Remove the white backing from the gray mastic. Using light tension, install one complete wrap of 2.5 inch wide gray mastic 
onto the cable jacket under the ground braid. Lay the ground braid back over the cable jacket and press the moisture blocked section of the ground braid into the gray mastic. Install one complete wrap of the two and a half inch gray mastic over the moisture blocked section of the ground braid. Notice, be sure to put one wrap of two and a half inch wide gray mastic under and one wrap over solder blocked area of braid to prevent moisture ingress. Twist the black rejacketing sleeve from side to side to release the grease. Slide the rejacketing sleeve over the ground braid and onto the cable jacket. Cut off red mesh sleeve, being careful not to damage the jacket or the splice body. Connect neutrals. Install cable tie to secure the ground braid. Connect the ground braid and the bleed wire to system following your company's grounding standards. Repeat steps 8 through 17 on remaining cables. This completes the splice.